This is uh, some sound sampling of my Ampeg V4 before I rebuild the tone stack. It's a suggestion off of the Ampeg V4 forum that you can find at the subsection titled The Workshop and a thread titled uh, Tone Stack uh, Upgrade or Modification. The owner of the forum is the one who presented this. He has a VT-22 and doesn't like ceramic caps, so he, he replaced all the ceramic caps in his amp, and then he came to the tone stack, and it's a modular unit with seven pins. It almost looks like it's been uh, vacuum formed, uh, encasing four capacitors and two resistors and he much preferred to get rid of that and have it all individual components and a few of the other readers have also done it and said it has made a difference in their sound of their amp it's not so much that it changes the amp as it just clarifies the tone controls the Ampegs use a, a Bexanol circuit which is considered a hi-fi circuit I'm not an electronics person I've just done a lot of reading lately before I did this. And that circuit allows a more independent control of the treble and bass, which ultimately gives you an actual true mid range boost uh, situation. And that's because you can actually cut the treble and bass as opposed to just adding treble and bass. So with the Ampeg amps, a lot of people don't understand you don't run the controls just like a Fender or, or a Marshall and just turn them up to 10. Instead, everything at 12 o'clock is neutral, it's flat, and then you add or subtract just like your home stereo system. So the amp has the ability to become very mid-rangey if you want to do it. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to keep it simple here just to get the basic sound of the amp and then come back after I've done the modifications and play the same patterns again and see if anybody can tell the difference. According to everything I've read, there shouldn't be any difference between capacitor types. In fact, I found one website who did a actual testing on all sorts of capacitors of the same ratings of different uh, materials, and the charts actually do overlap each other almost exactly. Um, however, over time, capacitors will drift as they get older, so some of the changes noted that the people have noted it might be just due to the fact that you're putting new components in there. Um, I'm not so certain that's all there is. <clears throat> Materials, I mean, do make a, have to make a difference to some degree, whether we can hear it or not. Some people probably can. This amp has been completely uh, redone as far as the capacitor, traditional capacitor job, new tubes, biased, etc. So it's actually in very good running condition. So it's a very clean sound. We're just going to strum some chords with everything set to zero flat. everything at flat we're running just under nine o'clock on the volume we're going to turn the treble all the, I'm going to turn it all the way up and just strum the guitar
treble neutral Bright switch, high, high ultra. to neutral, treble, bright high. Cut the high break. Right switch, negative. Okay, the bass has no switches on it, so we just go from neutral to the top and then to the bottom. mid-range currently set at 1000 Hertz for these amps you set the mid-range at 300 1000 or 3000 and then it varies within that range
300. Three thousand. Back to neutral. Okay, we're going to make it as bright as we can just for a comparison. Bass all the way off, high bright on, treble all the way up, 3000, mid range all the way up. as bassy as we can. Cut the highs, treble all the way down, mid-range 300 all the way down, bass all the way up. Full bass, To turn the mid range up at the 300 all the way. Full bass, mid 300, full on. Okay, so that's it.